Hey everyone, this is Dan with another one of my United Health videos. United Healthcare Group with the stock symbol UNH has been a top leader in the healthcare provider industry. They've been making huge amounts of profits year after year. On February 21st of this year, an internet hacker group by the name of Black Cat hacked into UNH's computer system. In the following day, UNH's management disclosed to the public that they were under cyber attack. The company stock dropped quickly. Within the next seven weeks, it dropped more than 15%. The stock price recently rebounded a little bit. Based on the Q1 earnings report that was published on April 16, UNH was hit with another big loss, which I called the Brazilian flop. I will talk about these events in this video. I will also tell you why I believe this is a good time to buy, to sell, or just to hold on to UNH shares. First, let's look at the UNH chart in the last year. As you can see, it's been gradually going up from May of last year up until December of last year. And then it started to go down a little bit. On February 22nd, when the management announced that they were under cyber attack, the stock price started to drop. It continued to drop until it hit the bottom in the beginning of April. And then when the company announced their first quarter earnings on April 16, that day the stock price jumped up because the loss related to the cyber attack turned out to be much less than anticipated. And the company also published some fairly robust forecasts for the rest of 2024. Let's talk about a cyber attack. It happened on February 21st, and it was done by a hacker group known as ALPHV or otherwise known as Black Hat. They broke into the company's computer system by way of their subsidiary by the name of Change Management. Subsequently, screenshots of Protect Health information and personal identification information were seen on the dot web. It is alleged that UNH paid the ransom of $22 million in Bitcoin to Black Hat, although UNH management has not confirmed it. UNH has been working with their customers with government agencies and cybersecurity experts to protect personal data, to restore the system, and to prevent similar events from happening in the future. And change management was acquired by UNH in 2022, and the system is antiquated, and which was scheduled to be updated. UNH management estimated between $1.35 billion and $1.6 billion of damage due to the cyber attack. $872 million have been charged to the Q1 2024 financial reports. Related to the cyber attack, United Health is in the process of being sued by various parties, including customers, as also companies that have been retaining services from United Health. I'd like to stop for a second now and remind you to click the like, subscribe, and notification buttons so that you can be notified when I post my next video. It'll also help me with the YouTube ranking. I also send out text messages a few times a week in the community section of my YouTube channel to inform my subscribers of some of my stock trades as well as my stock market analyses. Thank you. Let's continue. We have a lot of interesting stuff to cover for United Health. If you look at the EPS chart historically, this chart shows the quarterly EPS. So since 2010, you can see EPS, especially since 2018, the EPS has been growing quite steadily with the exception of the time during the pandemic period for obvious reasons. Although the most recent quarter, which is first quarter 2024, they're showing a negative EPS because of the two main events I was talking about in the beginning, which are the cyber attack and the Brazilian flop. I'll talk more about that later. I first looked at Humana, Santine, and United Health back in August 9, 2022, and I've refreshed the summary of the analyst opinions of the three companies, and if you line up the information back from 2022 with the information today, of course, the stock price came down from 537 to 503 today, May 8. Yahoo improved their rating from buy to strong buy. The high target got higher. The low target also got higher. Lose Nevalier maintained a B rating for the company, although quantitative rating has gone down from an A to a B. 
mainly because of the recent drop in stock price. TipRanks.com maintained the strong buy rating, and CN Money went from an average buy rating to strong buy. So overall, it's still pretty positive in spite of the cyber attack. When we look at the quarterly income statement, for the three months ending 2024, we have these numbers, and compare these numbers to 2023, we see the major changes are related to cost of goods sold, went up from $9.4 billion to $11.056 billion. I believe the damages related to cyber attack were absorbed into this number. That's why it went higher. And then this line of item is very interesting, which is loss on sale of subsidiary, $7 billion. And that's related to the Brazilian operation, which I refer to as a Brazilian flop. With regard to the Brazilian operation, United Health paid in 2012 approximately $4.9 billion in cash to acquire a 90% stake in this company called Amil Participacos. They sold a mill in 2024 for only $500 million. In their 2023 10K financial report, United Health Management mentioned various market risks, including interest rate changes and also foreign currency exchange rate risk of the U.S. dollar primarily to the Brazilian real and Chilean peso. And they also stated that the $7 billion of loss related to the sale of the Brazilian operation was mainly due to the currency translation. Now, if you look at the change in the exchange rate with the Brazilian real compared to the U.S. dollars in the last five years, the Brazilian money depreciated 22% against the U.S. dollar. If you look at Chile, in the same time period, last five years, the money from Chile actually depreciated even more. It went down 27% against the U.S. dollar. If they were under pressure because of the currency exchange rate in Brazil that prompted them to sell the operation in Brazil, then maybe they could be under similar pressure in Chile as well. Although I haven't found any information on the Internet pointing to that. It's just my speculation. But this is certainly something I want to watch out for in the future. And incidentally, I do own shares of United Health. If you look at dividend and stock buyback, according to Forbes, on May 3rd, 2024, UNH is one of the best stocks for share buybacks in May 2024. They have 1.3% buyback yield and 1.4% dividend yield. Let's look at valuation of the company. First, I line up a few leading healthcare provider companies, and they are Molina, CVS, Cigna Group, United Health, of course, Humana, and Centene. Look at their trailing P-E ratio, and they average out to be about 20. And then I look at the actual 2023 full year net earnings, which was $22 billion. And then look at the stock price and the number of outstanding shares. I was able to calculate the P-E ratio of the company and the EPS. That's actually what happened. I assume the earning growth for the next couple of years to be 12.92% per year. That's a pretty realistic estimate because their earning growth in the last five years was 13.76%. And then I use the assumption of 22 for PE ratio, which is the same as 2023. From these assumptions, I can calculate the projected stock price for the end of 2024 to be 592 dollars a share and for the end of 2025 669 dollars per share the 26.9 eps for 2024 turned out to be pretty close to united health management's projection of 27.5 to 28 for eps actually my number is a little bit conservative if you look at insider selling the red bars mean sales and the blue bars mean purchases Historically, when we see a lot of red bars, shortly after that, we sometimes see the stock price dropping. And if you look at most recently, especially since February after the cyber attack, we only have some sales, but not as much as some of the periods back in 2021, for example. So this is pretty good. That means the insiders still have a lot of confidence in the stock price because they are not too eager to sell yet. 
you could look at it more specifically, the most recent sales include on March 8th, the EVP and chief people officer sold 13% of his or her shares. And then on February 23rd, the chief accounting officer sold only 3% of his shares, which is not very much. And interestingly, on February 16th, the CEO of United Healthcare sold 113% of his share. I don't know how that happened. Maybe he did short selling. He owned supposedly 25,543 shares, but he ended up selling 28,943 shares. And that amounts to $15 million. And then December 05 of last year, one of the directors sold only 7% of his shares, although he owned a lot of shares. Apparently, he's basically netted $36 million. Overall, it's not extremely alarming. I don't think this flagged a crisis situation in United Health. If you look at the recent analyst upgrade and downgrade, the good news is that since the cyber attack, Barclay initiated rating for UNH, and they gave the company an overweight rating. Better yet, their price target is 551, which is nearly 10% above the current level. And then on April 4th, HSBC upgraded the company's rating. It went from a reduced to hold. Unfortunately, the price target is only at 460, which is lower than the current price. So one target is higher, one target is lower. Overall, it's somewhat neutral. At least it's not really pointing towards a total collapse of the stock price in spite of the cyber attack. From the website SeekingAlpha.com, I found two most recent articles or analysis about United Health. And the first one written by MMMT Wealth um, has some pretty positive opinions about a stock, and they gave UNH a strong buy rating. And then another analysis published by JR Research mentioned that the company is pretty strong, and apparently neither one of them was really too concerned about a cyber attack. JR Research also maintained a buy rating. So both analyses are fairly positive. Now, if you look at United Health compared to the broad market, I'm very interested in when I invest in a company, I want to see how well the company will hold up, especially when the market is dropping. So I used five different time periods when the market dropped. The first one, of course, the famous financial crisis back in 2008 and then the 2015 market crash, the Fed rate hike that happened in 2022, which caused the market to drop more than 25%. And then the market correction in 2023 and the pandemic, of course, that happened in 2020. So if you look at SPY representing S&P 500, for example, during the financial crisis, it went down 52%. Triple Q representing the NASDAQ index went down 47%. UNH, well, it actually went down 59%. So that was pretty bad. But if you look at the pandemic, SPY went down 23%. And UNH went down 20%. So it's a little bit better than SPY, but not as good as NASDAQ, which went down only 17%. In 2023, last year, SPY during this period went down 5%. Triple Q representing NASDAQ went down 4%. But UNH went up actually 11%. So overall, if you take the straight average of these five, what I call market drops, then SPY average dropped 23%. Triple Q, 21%, and UNH only dropped 14%. That means UNH is fairly recession resistant. In the meanwhile, as far as return in the last five years, UNH stock price returned 108%, certainly impressive, compared to SPY return only 79%. QQQ performed a little bit better at 136%. And, but since 2023, not too good. UNH went down 5% primarily because of the cyber attack. Triple Q went up 66% when SPY went up 36%. But in the last month, UNH went up 8%. That's a rebound, whereas SPY and QQQ pretty much remain the same at zero gain. UNH is definitely rebounding, and it's pretty resistant to recession, according to the historical data. Let's go back to the chart and do a little technical analysis. Currently, it's at 503. If you look at the chart, it pretty much at a, made a higher high compared to the stock price since March. The previous high was here. From the closing price perspective, for each day, we definitely 
reached a higher high, but we did not quite reach the intraday peak achieved back in the middle of April. We certainly see UNH making higher low since the middle of April. Looking at a pattern, there's still a good probability that the price will continue to go up until when it hits the upper Bollinger Band here. Because historically, when the price hits the upper Bollinger Band here, like here, 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 and here, it has a tendency to go down afterwards. But we still have a 4% gap between where we are now and upper Bollinger Band. That means there could be potentially a gain of 4% before can before we meet with this resistance. If you look at the RSI value, relative strength indicator, we are not quite at 70 yet. We're currently, and last time when it hit 70, that was back in October 2023, it started to come down. That means the stock was overboard when RSI exceeded 70. So we're not there yet. That means there's still room for the stock price to go up a little bit more. What are my conclusions? First of all, the damages from the cyber attack have been contained. UNH claims to have taken the necessary countermeasures to prevent similar attacks from happening in the future. And besides, it, it'll be way too risky for any hacker to try to attack UNH in the near future because they just recently retained a security expert and also they've been working with the FBI, etc. Uh, the hackers will be stupid to try to attack UNH in the next year or two. So at least the company will be safe from cyber attack for the next couple of years. The annual net income was $22.3 billion in 2023. So even though they estimated a loss of $1.6 billion, but that could still be absorbed into their regular net income. And the 2024 net income, based on the management's prediction, is going to be just about as high or a little bit higher than the 2023 net income. The $7 billion write-off related to Brazilian operation is concerning, but I have not seen the write-off raising any long-term concerns from the professional analysts. And besides, the write-off really does not reflect reduction in the cash flow because they already spent the money back in 2012. So it doesn't really impact the cash flow today or any time in the future. And that's why it's not as alarming as any losses incurred from the day-to-day -day operations. And your subsidiary in Chile might incur another write-off in the future. That's only my speculation. That's something that I have to watch as I'm a shareholder of the company. I don't see any professional analyst downgrade after the cyber attack, which is good. And the stock price has been rebounding since after the April 16 Q1 earnings report. Based on my analysis of the last five periods of market drop, UNH has proven to be fairly resistant to recessions, and I like that for my portfolio. My final conclusion is that I will hold on to my UNH share for now and will continue to monitor new developments in the near future. I'd like to remind you that I'm not a financial advisor. I share my stock trading strategies and analyses for educational and entertainment purposes only. If you want to buy or sell stocks, you should make your own decisions and you should definitely consult with your financial advisors before you do so. This wraps up my video for now. I will chat with you again in the next few days. In the meanwhile, I'd like to wish you the very best of luck with your financial investments.